About a month ago, I posted to Reddit a DIY album of my Nintendo Switch project, which involved buying each individual piece from a Switch online on eBay, AliExpress, and other international suppliers. I then assembled it, all to keep from buying one at an unreasonable price. The post was popular. I even had a few articles written about me. A few headlines that stood out to me were the ones saying, how to build a Nintendo Switch from scratch. Did they think that putting together a Switch was like baking a cake? And that led me to this idea. So, without further ado, I now present Building with Brennan. To begin, we want to start at our freezer. Take out a baggie of hatch green chili to thaw for an after project snack. While you're there, grab your fresh switch shells that you've been saving in the back and bring that back cover with you. If you don't have them fresh, store bought's fine. For a bonus DIY, stick around to the end for a switch dock upgrade recipe. Safety is always paramount in the kitchen, so use proper protective gear. Proper tools and organization is also another major key. For this, you will need plastic screen wedge, a Nintendo tri-tipped screwdriver, a small electronics Phillips head, straight and angled tweezers. I also recommend a metal flat pick tool. I'm starting with the right Joy-Con. So first, procure a vintage pink Pyrex and put your fresh right Joy-Con shell into the bowl. If the pink Pyrex seems unnecessary, that's because it is. Now, we will add our farmer's market buttons. Next, a silvery seasoning called screws. Begin with the shell with the most holes. Insert the A button into the top left clover hole. Up next, B on bottom. Find your X and put them on top. Last is Y, which should be easy. Don't forget to use a rubber. The home button goes into the bottom hole. Continue to use a rubber, always. Next is the plus button towards the top, followed by the rubber. Now we bring out our main ingredients. The logic board, NFC antenna, and infrared sensor. Pick up the logic board and grab the rectangle antenna looking thing. Insert ribbon into the second to last cable clip. Now insert the infrared things cable in the last input. Insert logic board, shiny side down. The antenna lays flush on the shell around the home button. Place the infrared thing in the slot at the bottom. Next, insert only two of the screws next to the joystick hole. Leave the other holes for now. Get the organic picked joystick along with the antenna cable. Separate the dust cover and place loosely on the joystick hole. The joystick head is too big and will not fit through the dust cover, so pull back the cover slightly on one side while you're inserting it. When placed, go ahead and screw in the metal things. After securing the joystick, place the ribbon cable in the cable input. Remember to pop up the input latch before insertion. Now put aside the base pieces and grab the slide parts from your pantry. The first part is the black bar. Put the rubber in the button and then the button in the hole in the black bar. The notches at the top will tell you which hole is the correct hole. Up next is the barrel looking button. Find the rubber that fits nicely on the barrel. The barrel goes just above the bottom button with the rubber facing down. On top of the buttons, we'll place the next piece. It's like a shiny circuit cracker with cable. Place the ribbon towards the top. Place two screws in the holes. Now we take the slide clip and put the small spring inside. At the top of the clip, insert with the handle facing towards you. Be prepared for spontaneous waves of anger when the spring shoots in a direction you didn't see and it takes 30 minutes with help to locate where it landed. To secure the clip, we will place this staple guy on top. Put one black screw in the hole and to finish the slide piece, place the release button in the hole, put the clip side over the release button. Next up is to connect the ribbon cable to the logic board. It'll make the rest of the assembly easier. Again, remember the input latches. Pick up your trigger button cable and place it in the input. To finish this layer, locate the bumper button and the long spring. Be aware, any part of this video that involves a spring has at least three outtakes of them flying out of my hands. Take the last shell and slide it into place, making sure the trigger cable is not pinched while coming out of the hole on the left. Two more screws at the top, one small screw to hold the trigger button cable down. Place two springs in the slot on the top. The trigger then needs to be placed carefully on top of the springs and then popped onto the hinge. Then I press down firmly. Next, grab the square antenna with the cable. Put it in the slot located on the right side at the halfway point. Snap the cable end onto the logic board. Put the white square thing, which is the rumble feature, in the spot above the infrared thing. The last thing to be plugged in is the battery. Test all the buttons out to make sure that they move and feel right. The finishing touches on this piece will now be 
the proprietary tri-tip Nintendo screws, the long black ones, four and all. If you did it all right and it works your first try, stop lying, stop. Now take a coffee break and contemplate if this is all worth the physical and emotional effort. Okay, after convincing yourself it's worth finishing the project, continue with the left Joy-Con, starting with the shell with the most holes. Now, add those garden goodies, a Joy-Con, button rubbers. Also, do not forget those farm fresh buttons. Find the D-pad and the D-pad rubber. Place in the hole that feels right to you. Next, we put the minus button on the top left hole. The button and the hole are notched so as to be dummy proof. But that hasn't helped me in the past. Cover the minus button with its rubber. Now we loosely place the joystick dust cover. Locate the camera shutter button and put it at the bottom hole along with its rubber. Open that cabinet again and get yourself a good looking side rail. And while you're at it, get the logic board. Place the logic board over the buttons, shiny side down. The only screws we're going to place right now are the two that don't interfere with the second layer. Go ahead and check the buttons to be sure that they are functioning correctly. Up next is the joystick. Like last time, be sure to lift up part of the dust cover while sliding it into the hole and throw in those two long silver screws. Then install the cable. Separate out the bumper and minus button cable. Place it on the top shiny side down and box button side up. There is one screw for the minus and two for the box. Hopefully. You are catching on to what's next. If you guessed cursed bumper button, you're correct. Don't forget to install that minus bumper button cable in the logic board. Now put aside the base for now and pick up your black slide piece. I'm gonna start this time with a barrel button. Add the rubber and put in the second from the bottom hole. Next, we will place the rubber in the remaining buttons and put them in the two open holes. Gently pick up your shiny button cracker, place the buttons shiny side down and cable on the top side. Use the two screws to secure the button wafer. Now we put the spring in the latch clip thing and slide it carefully, handle side facing upwards. Put the staple bracket over the latch and use the black screw to keep it in place. When that is finished, we will take the back shell and place the slide button in the hole. Place the slide button and use regular size screws to hold it in place. Go ahead and insert the ribbon cables from the slide to the logic board. Keep in mind to open the latches first then close after. Get a fresh trigger button cable and install. Now we need to find a medically steady hand to get the bumper in place with the spring. Grab second layer shell. Keep the trigger cable in the hole while placing the second layer shell. Use two screws on the remaining diagonal holes to secure the second shell to the base shell. Position the trigger cable in the slot and use small screws to secure. Unbury the vibrator and battery that you've been saving for a rainy day and insert vibrator into hole. Now fit the two remaining springs into the slots on either side of the trigger cable. Carefully line up the trigger on the hinge and springs. Press down assertively. The battery then goes last, being pressed firmly on the wire connector. Just a side note, don't use metal tweezers when electricity is present. It'll ruin your batch and you have to start all over with new parts. Let's close that clamshell up. If you get a green thank you light, you did all right. The tablet of the switch is in my opinion the simplest to complete. First up, start with the iron base. The ribbon cable holes will be on the right facing you. Get the front shell ready, but do not place yet. Install the short white antenna in the slot that is on the top right. The wire goes in the smaller hole on the top right. After getting a good fit, place the front shell over the front. There are two short screws on the top and two more on the bottom. After attaching the shell, go ahead and unpack that LCD. Keep a close watch on the cable when placing in the vertical cable slot. It needs to have the end connector shiny side up when placing it. The small cable at the bottom needs to be shiny side down. Both should lay flat and have no sharp folds. I went through two displays because I was not nurturing enough. The next step will be the digitizer, also known as the touchscreen. Base the cable to the right and slide into the rightmost slot. This is a shiny side down cable. Place some double-sided screen tape meant for small electronic devices. Now we flip the tablet over and check that all our cables are accessible still. I chose to place the battery next, but really, you should wait until the end to stick it in there. Next, crack open that can of fan and sound. Go ahead and slap these 12 mil bad boys on both sides of the bottom corners. Peel your favorite looking game cartridge and micro SD card reader. 
Put the side for now. Get out your slide rail connectors, and while you're at it, find the other long Wi-Fi antenna. Place it between the top left corners of the battery and the outer shell. It will have a slot that holds the square cracker. Thread the wire around the trench left for it. Now we'll add the right side Joy-Con rail. Shiny side towards the left and ribbon cable on the bottom. Go ahead and mirror the left rail and put one screw on the top and one screw on the bottom. Find the screws and rubber for the top buttons. Put the power and volume button in the rubber first. We will install the button ribbon cable. Shiny side facing the rubber. The cable will run along the bottom of the base. While we have been cooking, I have had a logic board that has been baking at 397 degrees Fahrenheit. After 12 minutes, remove from oven. Just kidding. Never actually bake electronics to bring them back from the dead. Forgive me, Luis Rossman, for I have sinned. I have learned over the last few years that the health risk is never worth the reward. Here, I have prepared an already working OEM logic board. I worked hard to find just the one, and I don't have any source for them currently. This one was from a local Craigslist seller. Keep an idea where all your connections are and need to be when placing the logic board. Start with the USB-C slot and angle it in from there. When it is sitting right, start adding the screws. The black screws will be used on the right edge to secure the board. Start working on inserting the ribbon cables into the correct slots. Starting with the left side rail, twist the cable around and insert. Next to that, we'll install the lower LCD cable. Shiny side down again. Now we will install the LCD cable. Shiny side up. Grab and install the fan. Input the ribbon cable for the fan and the power button. The latches are on opposite sides, so be careful when opening. Screw the fan in with the specialty fan screws that have smooth portions on the thread. Next, we will install the game cartridge and headphones jack. The board connection on this one is easy to break, so go slow and have patience. It will not feel all the way seated, but as long as it's making a connection, leave it alone. Now input the digitizer ribbon cable into the board. We will work on the heat sink now. Place a small bead on the copper square. Get that heat sink you've been saving in the back of your fridge and let it warm up to room temp. Start by fitting the radiator portion in the slot next to the fan. Start with the leftmost screw hole and move to the other two. Only screw down to where it is barely tight on the heat sink first. Then you can go back and tighten them all the way. Now finish connecting any cables that you haven't installed yet. Always connect the battery last after checking all the other connections. Next up, we'll be installing the RF shield. If you're not planning on using the shield, then go ahead and input the SD card reader. If you are using the shield, then wait until after to install the SD card reader. Now, we can go ahead and install it on the bottom left. If you're doing a non-original Nintendo back, you will need to use a kickstand hinge from an old backplate. Remove screws and transfer to the new kickstand. Now place the backplate and start by installing the proprietary Nintendo tri-screws, which I'm sure exists for a reason. Finish with the last screw on both side rails. On bottom, there will be two small screws and on top, just one. The very last screw is under the kickstand, just in front of the SD card reader. And that's it, we're done. Just look at that beautiful Nintendo Switch that we made from scratch. Oh, and turn it on to test. If it doesn't turn on the first try, please refrain from exploding. Take your time finding the possible problem and don't bring the project near any easily accessible windows. Thanks for watching my video. My future projects will be a lot less DIY, but it will still be informative. Keep watching for a bonus DIY on how to upgrade your Switch dock. Please follow the links in the description if you'd like to see a more in-depth tutorial. Now, the Nintendo Switch dock is known to have issues. This led to third-party sellers trying to make improvements on the design. Unfortunately, these docks started breaking systems. So this company came up with a solution that I really like. It takes all the original dock components and uses it in the new shell. This helps keep the back vents clear for a better airflow. So first, open the new shell. It will have screws and a small screwdriver. Put it aside. Now we will work on removing the electrical components on the original dock. Start with removing all the screws on the back. Pop the back off and start removing the wire connections. Remove the power board with the USBs. Not shown here is a USB-C charging port with cable. Begin by placing that USB-C charge port cable in the top of the new shell. Take the power board and input it into the charge port cable. Input the LED board. Put the power board in the slot and screw in only the three screws located closest to the front. The placement of the plastic LED cap is more or less up to where you want to place it. I like to slide it in one of the vent slots and place the board behind it with a thin piece of tape. 
Last, we place the four screws in the bottom, and then rubber stoppers over the screws. There it is. That's the 